to play or not to play. The decision recently made for transgender athletes in Texas. Lawmakers passed a bill that requires student athletes to play in the sport based on their assigned birth gender and not the gender that they now identify with. Texas is not the only state to pass a law like this. Here to discuss this controversial bill is attorney Andrew Lieb and former collegiate athlete Sheree Nicole. I'd like to welcome you both to the conversation. Um, all right. So, Attorney Lee, we'll start with you to get the legal side of things. What are your thoughts on Texas governor signing this anti-transgender sports bill into law? We're seeing it pop up across the country. It's discriminatory and it won't be upheld. And we know that because there's already been four cases in other states about the exact same topic. West Virginia's law is almost exactly the same. And that was shot down as unconstitutional because it violates Title IX in education. It also violates the 14th Amendment on equal protection grounds. It's a categorical saying you can't have transgender people and you can't categorically exclude people. You got to do it case by case. Yeah. Uh, Sheree Nicole, this one's for you. You were an athlete growing up. How would you have felt competing with a transgender female athlete? Would that have bothered um, you? So, so um, so before I address that, I just want to say, you know, obviously I have a lot of love and respect for anyone who identifies and is a part of the LGBTQ community. I want to get that out there straight away. But I will say, based on the, the research that we do know and the, the physiological differences that we know um, between those born male and female, I, I would have been I would have been a bit concerned. And, and it's twofold concern. Number one, I know that someone who was born as a male uh, would be faster than me, would jump higher than me. And so I would feel at a, at a form of disadvantage. On the other side of that, I would also feel um, a level of empathy for them because they may they may have certain emotions about participating as well. So, you know, it's on the one side, you want people to feel like they're included, but on the other side, you also don't want to feel like you're at a, a disadvantage. So it's a very, very tough, I would think for me, it would be a tough situation to be in. So are you saying that these athletes have an unfair advantage? Um, I, I do believe so. Um, you know, we, we understand that those born male um, are predisposed to be faster, to be stronger. Um, that's that's something that science tells us and that we understand that. So um, with that being said, yes, unfortunately. And I think that when we look at women's sports, I think that could be the most impacted um, when we talk about even prevention from injury, when we talk about sports like boxing and other things that are more physical. Women play football as well. And so, you know, when you have someone who's a trans woman participating in these sports, um, and as an athlete, she should have the opportunity to, but participating in these sports with other women who don't identify as transgender, you run the risk of someone being literally physically injured um, or worse. And so that, that ultimately is the concern. But on the other side of the aisle, you also look at athletes who may have an opportunity to be elevated in their sport by their skill set because they're being challenged at a different bar. So I, I just think it's a double, a, a kind of a double entendre that we're dealing with here. Um, but those are my thoughts. All right, Attorney Lieb, uh, how do her comments measure up to the law? So it's interesting what she's saying because they actually address that exactly in these cases, the West Virginia case, for example. And Cherie, what I want to point out to you is that we should look to what the NCAA is doing. And they're saying if you use testosterone suppressing therapy, then you're allowed. If you don't, then you're not. The key is the testosterone, not attacking a group of people that identify otherwise than what they were born. So I agree with what Cherie's saying. You don't want someone to have the testosterone, which is what they're saying, hey, this is what gives you that advantage. And they're saying it's roughly 10%. I've seen what they're saying on yes. that, Cherie. But if you're doing a testosterone, I can't even speak, testosterone therapy where they're not actually getting the testosterone like for example the west virginia case was an 11 year old who never went through puberty so that would be able to make everyone on a level playing field and that's why i said categorical exemptions exclusions are what's not being upheld on a case-by-case -case basis i could see exactly what she's saying all right what and i this... appreciate your point too i'm, I'm so sorry no no me, go ahead second, i'm sorry sheree nicole um, go I, ahead I appreciate, I appreciate the point and in, in the in the frame of reference here I also want to be mindful of, of of the term attack because I think some people I think we need to be mindful about that term I think some folks are really still trying to work through this and figure this out and I think just because they may not necessarily align with certain things doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's an attack on that side and I, I love your points that you're making and I also would like to see on the other side of legislation that may say no to transgender athletes what are the opportunities that you're offering them in exchange for the no 
And I think that's another thing that we're not talking about. And when we talk about people coming to the table and having some form of conversation where both sides can come to some form of resolve or middle ground, you have to have something on the other side of the no. So that's my other big issue. Athletics is an inclusive thing. We are all family as athletes. I don't care what your sexual preference is or how you decide to identify. And that's the part I feel like we're missing and we're not necessarily really targeting. All right. Well, I won't use the word attack, Cherie, um, Nicole, but I will say, <laughs> why are they picking on these little kids? I mean, why? Seriously, <laughs> like these are children. Is the spotlight not the same on professional sports? Well, that, that's the part that I'm also saddened by because children are still trying to figure out the world around them. Um, and when you put them in a position where they're discouraged in something that they naturally want to do, and then, you know, we talk about the politics around things and, imp and how that impacts their mental health, that is a real concern for me. So also, I mean, we have to think about what, what are the alternatives to the no? That's my, that I, I will continue to drive that home. So if you say in, in your particular state, you know, transgender athletes cannot participate, well, what are you offering? They should still be able to play sports. What are you offering? And so my, my other alternative would be, how about we segment the sports community? We're still a community, but how about we have op options and opportunities for transgender athletes to participate amongst one another? I know in youth sports is harder, but you got to introduce programs if you're going to just tell these kids no, because a kid's interpretation of no is very different from an adult, and it could literally ruin, ruin their lives in many respects. So I, I can definitely I, you know, respect where you're coming from with that. All right, Attorney Lee, your response. I'm only going to mention that transgender athletes and transgender people, transgender people overall, adults, it's 0.6% of the population. Mm -hmm. Children, it's 0.7% of the population. There's no way you're going to be able to have a transgender athletic league. So it's not my opinion. It's not your opinion. It's not whether we're attacking or it's not. I'm going to read you something they say in the West Virginia case. I think it's very important to understand. And what they say in this is they say a fear of the unknown in discomfort with the unfamiliar have motivated many of the most malignant arms committed by our country's government on their own citizens. We have to understand it's not about points of view, it's about constitutional rights. Title IX says that you can't discriminate. The U.S. Supreme Court in 2020 said that sex includes transgender status and transgender people are protected. And I will tell any transgender student in Texas that wants to bring a case, I got your back and I think you're going to win. All right, Attorney Lee, I hear that. Uh, Sharina Cole, what's your response? Um, I just also have a question about, we talked about testosterone a little bit early in the conversation and, and, you know, athletes being able to lower those levels. But when we talk about, you know, young boys, what does that look like? And this is just me posing the question because obviously we, that might not even be good for them as they're moving through puberty. So, you know, how are the scales, how do you, how do you see the scales being balanced on the youth athlete side in that regard when they don't necessarily have access to some of the things that adults would have to suppress something that could, that could, you know, even that playing ground. All right, Attorney Lee, we got like, uh, we got a wrap, but if you can answer a question really fast. That's why it needs to be on a case by case basis where you can have medical experts be telling us what to do instead of categorically saying no to transgendered people. And I think we're all on the same page and I thank you for bringing up this really important topic. I thank you both yeah, and thank absolutely. you for your honesty as well. Uh, Sharina Cole and Attorney Lee, thank you.